I'm Dr. Michael Miyasaki from Las Vegas, Nevada. What we're here today is to demonstrate the axis burrs that we use post cementation to adjust the bite on porcelain inlays, onlays, and crowns. The uh, surglaze system and the Zircut burrs were specifically designed uh, for this purpose. The Zircut burrs are also great at cutting the crowns off. But today we're just going to show some post op cementation bite adjustment. So here we go. We're going to start doing some occlusal adjustments on tooth number three. One of the things I try to be aware of is that I do have uh, Jan right now in a reclined position, so her jaw position may be slightly retreated because of gravity. What we'll do is we'll do, a, do our initial adjustments in this position and then seat Jan upright and just double check the bite before we let her go. The other thing that we'll make sure that we do is once we get her centric stops, her kind of tap-tap bite all adjusted so it's even with all the other teeth, we'll have her chew on the articulating paper just to go through her functional cycles and make sure the inclines aren't interfering with her bite. So let's start with um, just drying the teeth off, top and bottom. And we'll take some articulating paper. And we'll just go to the tap tap. So I'm gonna have you tap tap. And Jan was telling me that she was hitting a little bit hard on that tooth. So we are hitting a little bit hard on the uh, mesial marginal ridge of three and on the, on the uh, distal buccal cusp. This kit has some very nice long burrs and those are nice for recontouring, getting the long flat planes of a tooth. You could also use this to post cementation adjust veneers and crowns. You can also get down around the gingival margins and do some trimming. I like the football burr which is right here many times just to adjust the lingual sides of crowns or veneers. So it's a very nice kit. So we'll come in with our Zercut diamonds. That, which are very nice to adjust porcelain because they, do, they don't introduce any microfractures in the porcelain. One of the other th key things is we don't want to introduce a lot of heat to porcelain because the porcelain can then develop microfractures. So we'll use a little bit of water, we'll use um, a little bit of suction, and we'll just do some adjusting. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and begin our adjustment. One of the things that I, that I do not want to do is I don't want to create iatrogenic wear facets, I mean just flat planes in these restorations. So as I'm doing the adjustments, I'm looking at the spots where I want to keep the blue spot contact. But around that area, I'm going to kind of use circular movements so that we maintain the occlusal anatomy. So right here, I don't know if you can see, but instead of just creating a flat plane here, we're going to create a little groove behind our blue line, a little groove, accentuate the groove in front of the blue line, and then just carry our diamond burr, the Zircut in this case, kind of a circular motion to maintain the natural tooth anatomy. On this mesial marginal ridge, same thing, just try to keep the diamond moving in a circular motion. So we don't create just a flat plane. And we get a little bit of water going there. Maybe tap tap. Good. Doing good. How's that feeling? Still hitting hard? Mm, better. It's better? Just a little bit? Quite a bit. A little bit? Because you're marking on the other teeth. Let me just dry it. All right, when we adjust the bites, we just want to make sure the teeth are dry because, especially after it's been, this restoration has been glazed, it's, it's, we can miss spots. It's nice and smooth. And the one thing with this burr kit is I don't mind going back in and adjusting the porcelain because I can go back in with the Sarah Glaze porcelain polishing system and take it back to its glaze shine. Okay. Same thing, just circular motion. Just gentle pressure, lots of water. The Zircat diamonds do a great job. And it's just so gentle on the fourth one. These are impress restorations and this diamond is being very gentle. Not generating a lot of heat or microfractures. So you can see we have, we have different types of marks now. But they look fairly even going down the central uh, groove and fossa of the restorations. Now what we're going to show is the Cereglaze system, and it goes from green, blue, to the uh, ultra-fine yellow. So we'll go back, we'll go in first with the green, 
just to take out any deep scratches that these uh, zerk cut burrs may have left. And again, they're not very deep at all. Then we'll go back and refine that with the blue. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you get the scratches out with the green. And then any of that dull finish that the green leaves behind, hit that with the blue. And then to get the, the final glossy shine, go to the yellow. All right, right now we have the, uh, the green. And we're going to go in there and just remove any diamond scratches that may be in the porcelain. Just a little refining. We don't have very many scratches at all. That's we're fortunate. But even on the buckle areas, if there were some areas I wanted to refine, I could just use the green. So everywhere I, where I hit the uh, porcelain with the diamond, I'm just going back just to refine a little bit. the blue. So the air is keeping the porcelain cool. I'm moving the uh, polisher around different areas of the porcelain so I don't overheat the porcelain in one area. Again, the three-step system is meant to be very easy to use and very quick. So just go green, blue, and yellow, but make sure you use each one until what it can do for you is done. And many times I don't even go back in with the polishing paste, I'll just stop with the yellow because at least that's a nice shine. Looking really good. And some of the other porcelain polishing kits that are out there, the patient I, I feel feels a lot of vibration and shatter, but this is um, it's fairly soft. All right, so after just a few quick steps using the uh, Zircut diamonds to recontour and adjust the porcelain and then the Glaze porcelain polishing system, we're pretty much there with the bite with Jan reclined. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna seat Jan up and that'll allow the, the jaw to come down into its more normal position and we'll check the bite there and see if we have to do any adjustments in that position. Just a couple of quick tips I like to give doctors when it comes to adjusting the bite. One of the things that I always like to remind doctors is to check the bite in both positions. One with the patient reclined and then seat the patient upright, put their articulate paper back between the teeth, have them bite down and make sure the bite's good in that position. The other tip is uh, patients, some patients chew very vertically up and down, some patients chew more in a circular fashion. So what I like the doctors then to do is to put the articulate paper between the patient's teeth, tell the patient just pretend it's a piece of lettuce or food and chew on that paper and see how the, um, the occlusion is on the inclines. If on the inclined planes, the patient's hitting the inclined planes too hard, then go back in with the Zercut or one of the Ceraglaze polishers and just refine the occlusal surface a little bit to give the patient some clearance and you should be fine. I always tell the patients, if you notice after the anesthetic has worn off that the bite feels a little high or if there's any interferences caused by the new restorations to let us know it as soon as possible and we'll get them in and adjust that. We don't want to let them just live with it. It can cause a lot of tooth discomfort, which could lead to endodontic type symptoms, or it can cause periodontal problems. So I just tell the patients, you know, don't hesitate to give us a call and we'll take care of it for them.